Hey, Phantomaniacs! Welcome to the newest unboxing here on the Needless Things YouTube channel. What you are looking at today is the brand new Alpha Predator from NACA. The 100th Predator figure, or uh, according to NACA's Amazon store, the, hopefully you can see this, the Aloha Predator, which I'm not going to lie. Uh, I would not mind having an Aloha Predator as well. Maybe it would be the one from the Archie vs. Predator comics. So, anyway, this was a must-have for me. One, because it is that 100th Predator figure, but also because this design is based on the original Predator suit that was going to be worn by Jean-Claude Van Damme when he was the one playing the alien in the original movie. Excuse me, I guess I shouldn't say Alien, because that's obviously a different pr franchise. Uh, but the the creature was originally going to look basically like this. Uh, and then everything changed. But got uh, once again, the wonderful window box from Naka. I prefer these over the clamshells every time. It just looks really, really nice. You can see right here, I think this is a cool bonus. It includes a code to unlock this alpha predator in the predator hunting grounds online game which i tried to play and could never get logged into during the the alpha test or beta test or whatever they call it i guess it wasn't the alpha test huh uh but i, I am curious about the game and i do think that's a cool extra to throw in there you can see on the back of the box uh the Yautja race began thousands of years ago as the hishku 10 a primitive species suddenly struggling under the rule of alien invaders. For many centuries, the Amangi were cruel rulers, using the Hish for labor and breeding them to battle for the entertainment of their masters. But ultimately, the Amangi engineered their own defeat when they produced fighters strong enough to organize a rebellion led by one particularly powerful Hish who came to be known in legend as the first hunter, the Alpha Predator. Now, that's a really cool bio. Uh, it's the sort of thing that, like, Scott Knightlick made up when he was doing uh, stuff for Mattel for the Masters of the Universe Classics line. Uh, you've got some cool product shots on the back. You can see what this guy looks like. Very different from any other Predator we'd have, we've ever seen, which is one of the things that really appealed to me because, uh, you know, Predators as different as NACA has managed to make them based on the designs of Kenner and, and Predator 2 and the Lost Tribe and all that kind of stuff, uh, they are very similar after a while. So this one is very, very different and is one that I wanted to have. And of course, on the bottom here, we have one of my favorite things about NACA, that they actually credit all of the artists who contributed to this figure. I think that's a wonderful thing that NACA does, and I think other toy companies should probably adopt that practice. Uh, and as you can see, this is technically still part of NACA's Real Toys line, which was the original line of horror movie figures that NACA put out. Uh, and you can also see right here, Jason Edmiston, a uh, great artist, created this art right here. You should follow him on Instagram if you're not already. He does a lot of stuff for NACA. He's done a lot of their uh, Mego style figures, the packaging art for those as well. Uh, tremendous artist. Go check him out. So let's go ahead and get this thing opened up. Great window panel. Uh, another cool product shot. This is a situation where the product shots are fine by me because, you know, this doesn't exist in media aside from Edmiston's painting here. Uh, so product shot to make a lot of sense. It's not like they've got movie stills to go on. And then here you can see uh, what you're getting before you get it. Unless, like me, you ordered it online from NACA's uh, store. It was available on Amazon and eBay. And I highly recommend you keep track of their product offerings because if you don't mind paying the shipping, you can get stuff way earlier than it ships to other places. So let's go ahead and bust out the trusty 1964 box cutter and see what this guy looks like outside of this cardboard and plastic shell. This prison that he is encased in. All right. Now, I always like to take a look and see, oh, we got some extras in here. What is this? Uh, all right. Box is empty. That's everything. 
I always like to take a look at the insert that's the background here. And uh, one would presume that this is the planet Yautja, where the predators hail from. I, I don't know how that's supposed to be pronounced. I don't know that I've ever heard anybody actually say it. But it's cool. They always have a cool insert behind the figure. Sometimes I'll use those for figure photography when I'm posting reviews or whatever. I, I, I think it's nice that NACA puts that much into their packaging. Uh, and then here, this is very cool. I didn't know this was in here. We have, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it in the frame. There we go. Uh, we have a great poster of the Alpha Predator. But then on the other side, the real treat, look at that. How awesome is that? Uh, it's a poster of every single Predator figure NACA has released up to this point. So the first figure being, I don't know if I can fold this well enough, uh, the Masked Wolf. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure that these are in order. They may have them in some kind of like weird chronological order or something. But anyway, you can see the last one on the poster here is, there he is, our Aloha Predator. I wish. Somebody get me a Hawaiian shirt for this guy. Uh, but very cool. Nice little extra that I didn't know was going to be in there and something that I'll probably uh, give it a little iron and put up on the wall. So I tossed the box aside, which I shouldn't have done because it has a list of accessories on it. Something that is sort of new. Oh, wait a minute. What else have we got? We got one more little piece in the box here. Wow. Okay. So I'm not going to read this whole thing, but we've got a piece of like parchment with more of the story of the Alpha Predator. Very cool. I'm loving all the extras in this box because NACA is typically sort of, here's the product, enjoy. They're not big on instructions or anything else like that. So it's nice seeing all these extras for this special 100th figure. Uh, but on the box, it, it lists all of the accessories that sometimes I, I don't necessarily know what's what. So I'm going to keep that here so I can tell you guys what we're looking at as we look at it. Uh, I love when NACA has these, uh, plastic pieces protecting the accessories rather than having the tape directly on them. And not that I've ever had anything, uh, messed up by the tape having contact with it. I've never lost any pain or anything like that. I just don't like tape sitting directly on my, my figures and accessories. Okay. So right here we have what appears to be the Bone Shuriken, I probably could have figured that out myself. Let's move that out of the way so maybe we can get a little focus on that. Uh, really nasty looking piece of business there. Kind of kind of grotesque, almost a little... There's, I feel like there's a lot more Giger in this design. And maybe that's just me sort of projecting. But there's... This is something very different for the world of, of the Predator. Uh, we have a Sickle. Just called a sickle. Packed with uh, detail, lots of cool ridges. The handle uh, has wrappings on it. Uh, brutal looking weapon, but definitely something a sort of primitive original predator would use. Got a couple of weird tusks that I'm going to guess maybe just plug into the figure somewhere or attached to a different weapon. I'm not sure. We'll find out in just a minute. And then, of course, we have, as all great NACA Ultimate figures have, an assortment of interchangeable hands. We've got a, a big grasping hand. We've got a, uh, a fist. Another fist. They're good for punching. Uh, and then a hand that's kind of posed for a, a firearm of some kind the old trigger hand, uh, lots of detail on these little, uh, the claws are painted nicely. Just, uh, they look, they look great. This is what NACA does. They, they have a lot of attention to just how intense and detailed their products are. All right. And we've got a staff. Maybe I didn't need the names for these after all. Really wild, gnarly looking bone staff. Uh, it's interesting to me that these are so close together. I feel like it should almost be more open, like a trident, but they're very clearly intended to be 
the way that they are here. Like this isn't this isn't warped from being in the package. That's just it's supposed to look like that. Uh, look at that spine wrapped around the bottom there. That's really wild. This is some crazy like old school Danzig meets Guar album cover weird stuff. I really like this. Uh, and then of course this big talon on the other end. Uh, either side could gut you with equal efficiency. All right, and then we've got our big guy's insectoid looking mask. Uh, again, something very different, much more organic than what we've seen with other predators. This is, you know, it's that the whole theme of this being a, an original predator that's dealing with a different level of technology, this, this weird bioorganic uh, stuff going on here. I really, really like it. Uh, it it's going to make him stand out on the shelf even more than his impressive stature will. Uh, all right. So as you can see, we've got some ties here. And what I like to do for ties is rather than struggling with uh, trying to get scissors in there or, or untwisting these things, which can be a pain, I have my trusty fingernail clippers straight from Dollar Tree. I recommend you go to your local Dollar Tree and purchase, uh, you know, uh, one or two to keep in your toy opening area. And I'm going to assume anybody watching this has a designated toy opening area in their house. But look at this. Look how much easier this is than struggling with these darn twist ties that nobody likes, but that we all agree are necessary for the integrity of the toys that we love so much. All right. Looks like that's every twist tie taken care of. We will uh, safely store our fingernail clippers away and see what it takes to get this guy out of this plastic tray. Oh, lots of noise. All right, let's take a close look at this incredible example of the predator species, uh, whatever, whatever species they gave it, gave it on the uh, species name, they gave it on the biography that I've already forgotten. Now, one of the things about NACA figures is I tend to be very, very, very careful when I'm manipulating them because you don't know which parts might be a little more delicate, a little more fragile than other parts. And it's a shame. And I'm sure we've all, any NACA fan has had this experience where you inadvertently break something right out of the box. So he's got these cool, lots of, uh, this spike stuff going on. I love how we've got sort of a theme going on with these different talon type pieces uh, I have not. Okay, it looks like this. I don't know if it'll be this side or the other side, but it looks like these plug in right under here. That doesn't feel very secure, so that may not necessarily be the right side for these, but for the time being, if they'll plug in. That might be all right. I don't even know that there's a spot for this other side. That's interesting. We may have kind of a asymmetrical thing going on here because I don't see a spot to plug this other one in. It looks different. So what we've got here on this back piece, underneath the traditional Predator dreadlocks, uh, there's there's this interesting hole. It almost looks like it's a place to store something, but with his hair in there, I don't see, well, one, I don't see what you could get in there. And two, none of the pieces really seem like they would fit into that spot. So it might just be an interesting place where the, the sculptors wanted to create some open space and, uh, do something a little different for the back of the predator. Uh, as far as the front, he's got that face that we all know and love. Uh, it looks a little bit different. The coloring is, it's got some more gray and even some like lavender in there. Uh, it's a unique look. And he's got a lot more dreadlocks than your standard predator figure has. You know, typically there may be about a dozen on either side. 
uh, and they and they will tend to be layered. There's a ton of detail put into these, but this guy is really, really hardcore with these. I'm going to try and take this one right here and get it back where it's supposed to go. There we go. Uh, and these are all, as you can see, very, very flexible. Like they, they aren't going to interfere with the articulation or anything. Let's see what else he's got going on. He's got, again, rather than having the traditional mechanical gauntlet that the Predators have, he's got this, I'm a little nervous about how this thing is shaking around here, but he's got a, an animal's like jawbone ready to just eviscerate you. And then on the other side, uh, again, rather than the self-destruct gauntlet or whatever you want to call it, he's got maybe the other side of the animal's jawbone. This, you know, this with a little spine up on top here. Uh, just an incredible design, incredible amount of detail coming from Naka. I love this so much. Uh, he's got an interesting sort of razor-looking belt. Ah, oh, now look at that. That's very, very cool because... That means we have a place, I'm guessing, to store this sickle. Yep, that goes right in there. Weapon storage is always a huge plus for me. Uh, it's a very big deal when I've got places to put all the stuff that a figure comes with. That, that's important to me. Uh, you can see we've got some sort of like rib cage armor piece here. This is a soft plastic that, really a rubber, that moves around so that his articulation here, as you can see, that's like really nice movement going on with that guy. Uh, I'm so glad that Naka has abandoned swivel waists and we now, on these figures, have the cool like sort of ball joint type waist that quite frankly, every... Any toy line that's aimed at any kind of adult collector should be adopting at this point. Uh, his kilt is another piece of sort of rubber. It's got a little skull on the front here, some smaller bones. Uh, there's a nice fur texture to it. Uh, he's got like an armored cod piece under that. Uh, lots of cool design work. And that's one thing that I think maybe gets overlooked sometimes with the Predators is how much art there is in their aesthetic. They're not just these bloodthirsty tribal warriors. There's a lot of artistry to their armor and their design and their look. Uh, and this guy definitely uh, keeps that going. I'm still not sure where that other talon is supposed to go. I haven't seen a spot for it yet, but that's okay. Maybe Naked just gave us an extra. Uh, which is is fine. That's something that Mezco does in their 112 series uh, that I really appreciate. Some of the smaller pieces, you just get extras. Uh, you can see these little bone, the, the spine pieces wrapped around his biceps up here uh, with, with paint. Just a really intense, gruesome look. Cool shoulder armor up here that is two pieces this piece is attached to the arm. This piece is attached to the torso. So you've got plenty of movement right there. And then I'm going to take a look here and be very, very careful with this. You can see there's a double jointed elbow. I can't quite get that bend. And right here live on video is not... Oh, there we go. Maybe it is. So look at that. Look at the range on that elbow. What a great bend they've managed to get into this really, really detailed figure. Uh, I'm so impressed with everything Nick has been doing for the past few years on, on things like this. They've really mastered the game, I feel like. Uh, more cool, organic-type armor going down here on the thighs. And then here, the uh, greaves, maybe, I think is what these are called. Uh, sort of almost look like they could be metallic, but I think again, they're, you know, parts of some creature that this thing has slain. Uh, and then we've got the classic for you foot enthusiasts out there. Look at that. There's that classic bear predator foot just out there for everybody to look at and enjoy. All right, let's see how well this mask fits on this guy. Cause this is something that 
has traditionally been a little tricky about the predator line is sometimes the masks, uh, sometimes they fit better on some figures than others. And I'm actually trying to figure out how this even goes on him. Is that it? No, that's not it. And if I don't have success soon here, oh, well, that thing just went flying away. Uh, so I'm sure that mask fits on, and I'm sure it fits on well, but I'm also sure it just rolled away under a chair, so we may not be... Okay, there we go. Sorry, guys. I'm going to give that one more try. Um, you can see the inside of the mask has a very specific sculpt to it, so it is intended to fit on his head in a very specific way that uh, is just not happening right now. That can't be right. I feel like something along these lines... No, that's, even, that's crooked. All right. So this is not the thing to figure out on live video. I'm sure that mask will snap into place and we'll get it figured out. Uh, I'm not worried about that at all. Now is just not the time to do it because you guys want a uh, final word on this guy and his little spike that just fell out. And that's the thing is these NECA figures, they kind of make you earn their place on your shelf because there are often lots of pieces that you have to figure out and you have to put together almost like a puzzle and see the best way for everything to fit on. Uh, but overall, we've, we've looked at everything that this creature comes with. I think it's phenomenal. I'm excited to sit down and just sort of fiddle around with this guy because that's part of the fun of Naka's products is figuring out all the features, figuring out what to do with certain things. And I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I have to go online and find a cheat sheet that explains to me exactly what to do. Like uh, the Foosh will often have links to, oh, here's how this thing works from, uh, from Naka. But this guy, I think I'll be able to figure it out. I'm just not going to do it live here. This is a great figure. Should be showing up in your local stores any day now. Uh, or you can get it, of course, from places like BigBadToyStore.com. But an amazing entry as the 100th Predator figure in NACA's ongoing Predator toy line. Thanks for watching, you guys. The Needless Things podcast is available every single Friday wherever you get your podcasts. Now, click that like button and subscribe. Thanks a lot.